Hey guys, Dan here with today's Daily Quarantine video, and I've been talking about Quibi for months now. I used to call it Quibi, because uh, that's what it looks like, but it's Quibi, uh, and what that stands for Quick Bites, and uh, this premiered on Monday. So this is my video to tell you what I think of Quibi, what I think of their shows, and whether I think it is worth it to get a Quibi subscription. So if you don't know, the essential premise of Quibi is that it's quick videos that you can watch on your phone. It's only for phone use. Um, they don't have a, a app on your uh, Mac or your PC or your um, television. It's not on, you know, like I have an Amazon Fire Stick. It's not on there. It's not on Roku. It's just for your phone. And um, no video is longer than 10 minutes. Most fall in the 7 to 8 minute range, but no video is longer than 10 minutes. And they are producing content daily for most of their shows. And uh, there's all kinds of different shows here. They have what's called... Um, you know, movies in chapters, and so they have four drama movies, two comedy movies, and they're split into seven or eight minute segments, and over the course of time, we'll get a full movie that way. They also have a bunch of docu-series, reality and uh, talk show and competition type series. Um, they have some lifestyle shows, um, and then they have a bunch of news shows as well. So they debuted with 42 shows overall, and I watched... 32 of them for you. Um, since they are quick bites, I only watched one episode of each. Um, so even if it was like a, a one of the, with the the movies or whatever, I watched them yesterday. So there's six. Um, well, the first day, I guess they, they must have launched with three because uh, I looked at everything Thursday night and a little bit this morning. Um, but uh, it was all like... There were six episodes up, and now there's seven episodes up. So they're adding one every day, but they premiered most of their shows with three episodes. So you could sort of dive right in if you want to. But it sort of, to me, defeats the purpose of what Quibi is. So I only watched the one episode at the time. So, um, like I said, I watched 32 of these. I, I printed them out and wrote all over my sheet here um, with little uh, stuff. I'm not going to review with a letter grade each and everything that I watch. That would be silly and take up way too much time. I'm just going to give you my Quibi version. This will be a couple quick bites, and then we'll move on. And then basically at the end, I will give you sort of my best and worst of everything and give you the likes and dislikes of Quibi as a whole. The The things I didn't watch were the news uh, segments. Um, a, I'm not much of a news person anyway, um, but, you know... I, I don't know. It, it's all pretty standard stuff. Like, BBC News has one called Around the World. Um, there's a couple of Telemundo shows on here. The Weather Channel has a show. ESPN has a show. Um, e! News does a, a pop culture one. Uh, there's a Pop 5 for music. There's uh, an NBC News one. And then TMZ does one twice a day called No Filter. Uh, actually, I guess the NBC News one is twice a day as well. All of these shows, except for a couple of the news ones are Monday through Friday only, because sadly, you know, they, they've launched this at a weird time in, in the world, because the idea was, oh, when you're on your morning commute, you're on the train, you can pull out your phone and watch a Quibi video. Um, obviously, a lot of people are not really uh, going to work these days, certainly not on a train if they are. Um, so, it's sort of unfortunate they launched it at that, at that time, but at the same time, people are home and bored and want stuff to do, so maybe uh, maybe you can watch some of these shows. So I didn't watch any of the new shows, but literally every other show I watched, uh, one episode of, so let's just go to it. So for the movies, uh, there's four drama movies, 50 Stages of Fright. It's uh, written, directed, and produced by Sam Raimi. Uh, there is bad acting here, um, terrible effects. It's a horror anthology series. Um, and it was just, I thought, corny. Uh, most Dangerous the Game of oh, 50 Stages of Fright. The, the premise is there's going to be 50 episodes, I guess, one of each state, and it all comes from, like, urban legends. So it's, like, interesting, but badly done. Most Dangerous Game is next. Liam Hemsworth and Chris... 
Christoph Waltz star in this. Uh, this is an action thriller film. It's basically, uh, you know, Hunt for Man. Chris Hemsworth's character uh, is dying of cancer. He wants to provide for his wife, so he considers, uh, you know, being the most dangerous game for Christoph Waltz. Great acting, as you would uh, expect from those two. It's intriguing, though a bit generic in the first seven minutes anyway. Survive is next. That is a thriller starring Sophie Turner uh, and Corey Hawkins from Straight Outta Compton. Um, it's called Survive. And uh, I thought it was very boring and messy. I didn't really understand the premise from that first clip. I had to actually go online. I had a tab open the whole time of uh, Entertainment Weekly because they gave like real synopses of all the shows. Um, and I was like, all right, I'm not getting this premise really from the first episode. So that's maybe one stumbling block we'll get back to. So I didn't really like Survive. Uh, next, When the Street Lights Go On. This, to me, was the best of all of the films, drama or comedy. Um, Queen Latifah and Tony Hale are supporting, but I didn't see them in this particular episode. Mark Duplass I saw in this episode as uh, one of the co-stars. Great cliffhanger after the first uh, seven or eight minutes here. Uh, this is the best-looking one of all the movies. Uh, it's the most well-written, and there's good intrigue as well in a very small amount of time. One thing is you have to establish your characters very quickly with a format like this. Uh, two comedy movies. Flipped, which is uh, Will... Um, I I didn't write his last name. It's the guy from uh, Last Man on Earth, Will Forte, uh, and Caitlin Olsen. Um, they are uh, basically, you know, do-nothing people who are har horrible at their jobs. They enter this contest to be sort of uh, on a HGTV type show to flip houses. Um, and then... That's all that's in the first episode, but then apparently, like, there's a whole hostage situation that takes place, and, like, there's a whole gangster thing, but, like, there's no existence of that in this first episode, in the first seven or eight minutes. I keep calling them the, them the pilots, but really, it's the first episode, because um, it's really the first, like, eight to ten minutes of a movie. Um, I thought uh, there was immediate characterization here. We knew these characters right away, but we didn't get nearly enough of the story, uh, and it was kind of funny. Uh, but I also really like those two people. Nikki Fresh is next, and this is titled as a comedy, but I think of this as more of a reality show. It's Nicole Richie and uh, the the guys from Good Charlotte, because she's married to one of them, and they're trying to be... She's, like, trying to do this rap alter ego called Nikki Fresh. Um, it's listed here as a docu-comedy, but this is... To me, I wrote down absolute trash. It was horrible. Uh, not worth watching. And I like... Uh, Nikki, Nicole Richie, too. I, I had recently said that on uh, another video, but um, not for me. Okay, so the docu-series, uh, I guess they did these alphabetically. That's why I'm going in this order. Um, Fierce Queens is first. Reese Witherspoon narrates this. It's a nature documentary, um, and it's about basically, uh, you know, female empowered animals. Um, I think it's very educational, but more for kids than uh, pretty much anything else on the slate here. Um, you know, I, I mean, I guess families too, since it's educational, but, um, but I found, I, I thought it was kind of pointless on a small screen. Like if you see a nature documentary, cause it's shot really well and it's like, it just loses so much on a little tiny screen. And by the way, I have my iPhone, right? But I like to like play games and stuff on my phone while I'm watching things. So I didn't watch it on my phone. I watched it on my little iPod here. So it's like, I was watching them on even a smaller screen. Uh, next is I Promise. This is about LeBron James's school that he opened called the I Promise School. Um, this was fine, but it seemed more like a 60 Minutes or a CBS This Morning profile, um, not a whole show. I guess each episode they're going to dive into a different like family's perspective of the I Promise School. Um, I guess if you want something that in-depth, it's fine, but... It seemed fine as just like the eight minutes I saw. I got the whole gist of everything. Um, so I don't know where you go with it from there. Uh, Nightgowns is next. Um, this is from uh, Sasha Velour and her drag show. I don't know who this person is, but I guess she was on um, the RuPaul Drag Race. Um, each episode, I guess, of this is going to f uh, focus on a different drag queen. Either I think they're all going to be in the Nightgowns production. Um, but we're just going to focus on a different drag queen, each one. Um, it's, it's half like finding out about the person and half about their performance. Cause then we see like half of their performance, like maybe two or three minutes worth of their performance towards the end, which I didn't think you necessarily needed all of that. Um, 
you know, I, I think we could take a little more time maybe to get to know the person, but it was okay. Uh, Prodigy was next. This is uh, kids doing sports. It's a lot actually like um, some of the stuff you would see like on Disney Plus, like the really feel good kind of thing. They uh, choose one kid who is some sort of sports prodigy and give them, you know, good uh, good props and talk about them and explain why they're so cool and so important uh, and whatever. I mean, it's, it was done fine, but I don't care about that kind of stuff, so it was not really for me. Um, there were several things on here that were not for me, but that's all right. Uh, Run This City is next. This is uh, this was an interesting one. Uh, Jocel, or Jocel, I think, uh, Korea, is a 23-year-old mayor in Massachusetts, The one of the youngest mayors of a town his size ever. Definitely interesting, good storytelling so far in the first seven or eight minutes, the first Quibi uh, episode. Um, we just sort of see his rise to fame, but apparently there's like a bunch of stuff that he's done maybe that's illegal. And so I guess we'll get into that in subsequent episodes. Uh, Shape of Pasta is next. This was kind of decent. Uh, foodies, I think, will really like this. It's basically this uh, chef dude. I don't know if he's famous or not, so I didn't even write his name down, but I had never heard of him, um, which doesn't mean he's not famous, but um, he lives in Italy and uh, is going around different towns trying to learn from the town's ancestry about different shapes of pasta and different types of pasta that, uh, if undocumented for too long, may just fall by the wayside if it's not passed down through the generations. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and, and they give you like sort of a lesson, uh, on the background of the different shapes. And then, uh, you know, we talk to the person and sort of interview them for a little bit. Um, you know, I'm not much of a foodie, but I thought it was interesting nonetheless. Um, and music is next. Um, and the reason that's at the end alphabetically is because it's the and sign. It's the ampersand. Um, this basically is just sort of like a documentary about different types of music. Uh, the first episode was uh, about EDM stuff, and they interviewed Martin Garrix and his uh, songwriting partner and um, just sort of explained how cool EDM is. And I don't know. I, I found it mostly uninteresting. It was like a class. Like, there wasn't much oomph to it. Like, okay, it was... There were cool lights and music because that's EDM, but... Um, it was very, very, like, dry, I thought, in the delivery. So not too interesting there. All right, then we get to the reality, competition, and talk shows category. There were definitely some interesting ones in here. Chrissy's Court is first. This is Chrissy Teigen as a judge. Horrible. Uh, she, th I, I don't like Chrissy Teigen. I've said it before. She ruined that show, Bring the Funny. I couldn't even get past the first episode because her cackle was so annoying. Um, and I love John Legend. I think he's so cool, and it, like, bums me out that he married her. Um, he, of course, appears in this first episode uh, as himself because it's a episode about, like, a, a broken speaker, and so they're like, oh, John, why don't you sing into this speaker and see how broken it is? Like, it, it makes Judge Judy look like friggin', you know, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg here, you know? And I love I loved Judge Judy anyway, so I'm not slighting her, but, like, I mean, this is just, this is the lowest courtroom thing I've ever seen. Um, I, I think even if you like Chrissy Teigen, you'll be like, what is going on with this? Um, all right, Dish Mantled is next. I thought this was funny. This is, um, Titus Burgess from Kimmy Schmidt, and, uh, he, it's a, uh, game show, and there's two chefs, and he blasts them in the face with, like, a big, you know, power gun or whatever, like a t-shirt cannon type thing. Um, he blasts them in the face with an exploded dish. Uh, not the actual dish, but an exploded meal, and they have to figure out what it is. Um, and one of them actually got real close in the first episode. It was cool. And then the winner gets $5,000. And then he has different people come on. Uh, in this first episode, the other two judges were some guy from the new version of Queer Eye, um, and then Dan Levy, whose show uh, Shit's Creek just ended. Um, and, but I... I Put the beginning of episode two on just to see if the judges are different each episode, and they are because, like, Jane Krakowski from Kimmy Schmidt is one of the judges in the second episode. So I guess Titus is the host and one of the judges, um, and then the other two will rotate, I guess, per episode. But I thought that was that one was a lot of fun. Um, up next is another game show actually called Game Show, G-A-Y-M-E, because it's a bunch of homos, Game Show. Um, I can say that because I'm gay. Uh, okay, anyway, it's it's Matt Rogers and Dave Mazzoni 
are the two people who I don't really know, but um, they also have different guest panelists as well. And uh, here it was Elijah Schlesinger and uh, Bowen Yang from SNL. This one was kind of fun. Um, they have basically straight people come out and like do gay things or identify gay you know icons based on symbols and stuff. Um, and then they win based on that. They I don't know if there's actually a monetary prize or if it's just. They, they dub them Queen of the Straits, and they give them a crown and stuff, which is, it's cute. Um, Gone Mental with uh, Lior is next. Okay, I loved this. I am a huge fan of mentalism. I like magic a lot, but mentalism takes it to me f to, like, a whole nother level for me. Like, I don't, I don't understand even remotely how these people do mentalism. Um, and so he has a, a guest on every time, and the first episode was uh, Rob Gronkowski, who I've never really heard of until The Masked Singer uh, a couple weeks ago when, when he was on there. But uh, I thought this was a lot of fun. Uh, one of my favorite shows for sure on this. Memory Hole is next. That's Will Arnett, and he's uh, bringing up video clips from the past, and each episode, uh, I guess, is going to have a different theme. The first episode was all about how the Chicago Bears did the Super Bowl shuffle, and then it sort of dominoed into all these other football teams and other sports teams having their own raps and songs. And he played one from uh, a Canada hockey team that was really funny. Um, it's it's very like The Soup with Joel McHale um, in, in that sort of tearing something apart. Uh, and then they did like a little skit at the end that, that reminded me a lot of The Soup. Um, so, you know, it wasn't bad. I liked it. Uh, next is Murder House Flip. Um, and these are all in three parts. So, uh, you know, for Quibi, I don't understand why this show was on a Quibi. Uh, you know, you're supposed to watch them in bite-sized chunks, but these all, the two that they put up so far, all have three parts to them. And basically, it's these house flippers that um, go to various real-life murder houses. They sort of explain some background on it. And then that's the whole first part of the show. I assume in, in episodes two and three, they actually flip the house. But to me... This seems like a better fit somewhere else. Um, I, I think it's unsuited for the format. Um, also, there's like they try to do like comedy bits with it. It's like, all right, just talk about the murder, please. Like this is not a joke show. Um, next is Punked. That is a joke show. Now you know Punked from MTV. Um, this seems like a no-brainer for Quibi because Punked was already in two like eleven to twelve minute segments per episode anyway so to bring it down to eight to ten minutes is not that big a deal uh chance the rapper hosts it who i wasn't real familiar with but he hosted snl in the fall and was hilarious um i i know like a couple of his songs i guess but um the person he punked i don't know at all megan the stallion i guess she's a rapper or something but um they hit her dog and it was real funny um the sauce is next uh, this one's mildly interesting. It's a dance competition, which I don't normally like. Um, but what I like about this is this is a long-form Quibi show, but each competition is one episode, and that makes sense. So we are introduced to different people, and it's sort of like a March Madness bracket type thing um, as it breaks down. Um, Usher is the producer on this. Um, I think it's cut like way too rapidly. It like, made my head hurt to watch it. But, um, but there's a $25,000 prize at the end of the whole thing. So this is one, I guess, that's a lot more serialized than some of them, but, uh, but kind of interesting. Um, Singled Out is next, and again, that's taken from the old MTV days. Uh, Jenny McCarthy was originally on this. This one is Kiki Palmer, who I freaking love um, from back when she was a little girl. And then Joel Kim Booster is sort of the guy on it as well. You know, they have to have the host and the... But it's uh, the roles are reversed. Like, before, Chris Hardwick was the host and Jenny McCarthy was, like, the woman interviewing the people. This is Kiki Palmer's the host, for sure. Um, and uh, it's interesting. I mean, it's it's classic MTV style. It has the same basic look, but it updated it for the digital age with uh, swipes and stuff. She brought they, they bring people in that you swipe on, and then from there, they single them, dwindle them down, I should say. Um, till it's one person. And uh, they, they got very aggressive right away with the LGBT stuff. Uh, the gal that's on is bi, uh, that was choosing this week, so her final two turned out to be a boy and a girl, uh, and she ended up going with the girl. So, uh, all right, next is Skirt with Offset. Um, Offset is from the frickin' Migos, and they're, like, okay. I actually like their, when they feature on other people's records more, um than their own songs, but uh, 
Offset is so boring in this. This is the most. Bo this was probably the most boring show of all the ones I watched. Maybe um, he just did make it fun, and also then it's it's about cars, right? It's like a car show because it's skirt, you know, the whole car thing. But then, like halfway through the eight minutes or whatever it is, they turn it into a show about guns, and so then he's like firing machine guns and stuff. It like it it just made no sense. Like I get it, both cars and guns are like macho, but he was such an awful host. Terrible. Um all right, Thanks a Million is next. Oh, this one I loved. This is a uh, a show about giving a celebrity gives a hundred thousand dollars to somebody that has inspired them. So then that person has to uh you know, pay it forward and they take fifty for themselves, give fifty to another person, then that person takes fifty for themselves and gives twenty five to another person. So it's this sort of chain of giving. It's called Thanks a Million because there's ten episodes. Each one is a hundred thousand dollars from the celebrity, so that's totals a million. J Lo was the first person. Um, I actually thought this this one should be longer. Like this, it's it's cute for the the small format, but like this, I feel like you definitely could have turned into like a half hour show just to get to know the people more, um, and maybe keep it going, <laughs> keep it going. Okay, then the next person gets twelve thousand five hundred. Then the next person gets whatever you know, down to like oh, I gave this person twenty bucks. No, but I, I think it stops okay where it is at the twenty five thousand, but. Um, I, I would love to know these people more. This show made me cry. It's the only one on the whole slate that made me that emotional. Um, and so I really liked that one. You Ain't Got These is next. And this is a show about sneakers uh, hosted by uh, Lena Waithe from Master of None. And um, I really when I heard the premise for this, I was like, you know, I don't care about sneakers. This is going to be like that stupid offset show about guns and cars. Um, but actually, it's really interesting. Uh, because not only is it about... Um, sneakers themselves but it's about the whole culture it's about what sneakers mean to different facets of culture and the history of them um and i thought that was a lot more interesting than just you know some oh here these are like i thought it was going to be like mtv cribs but with sneakers um and it was not that at all i, I think it should be more focused in general because it is a little all over the place um in the in the the first quibby these are all bordering on about seven or eight minutes, these Quibi. Some of them are as short as five. So, like, I'm saying seven or eight minutes, but it's just a ballpark. Um, but anyway, so I skipped over all the new stuff. So next, the Daily Essentials Lifestyle stuff. Um, this is a real mixed bag. There's there's so many, a wide variety of, like, different things here. So first is Last Night's Late Night, and this is produced by Entertainment Weekly. Um, and what's interesting about this one is uh, the pre the, the, they only keep up three at a time. Because I checked last night, and they had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I checked today, and they only ha or they didn't have one for Monday. I'm sorry. And I thought, oh, okay, well that makes sense because Sunday night there's no talk shows, so they wouldn't have one Monday. But then I looked today, and it was only Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I guess they only leave three days at a time of this up, which I think is weird. I could go back and see what the highlights were of an of an old talk show, but um, it was weird that they included Ellen on this. That's not a late night show. Um, but obviously with everybody being under quarantine, they were showing a lot of clips from people doing their home monologues and stuff like that, and a couple people, uh, you know, being interviewed virtually, so it was kind of interesting. Um, The Daily Chill is next. This I loved, because at the beginning of the year, one of my, um, New Year's resolutions was I wanted to do, like, five minutes of meditation every night before bed, and, um, I stumbled on some videos I liked on YouTube, but there were only so many so I ended up like repeating a lot of them and then um, eventually I just kind of bowed out of the whole thing but this is an inspirational five to eight minute meditation every single day it's a new thing um, so I really like that it's, it, that's cool um, the Rachel Hollis show is next I was not in not familiar with this woman but she's a bestseller for women's help self-help books I guess or inspiration books um, and I thought this was actually really fun. Um, in this episode, she was like cooking something and she's kind of silly. And, um, I don't know this, this week, her theme is happiness. So this first episode was about, um, you know, how to be more happy during the quarantine. Um, one thing that's interesting about this, and I'll sort of get to this overall on my likes and dislikes is a lot of these shows, the, the daily news shows and the daily essential shows, some of them have been pre-recorded. Well, not the news, but some of the essentials shows have been pre-recorded, and many have not. So you're seeing 
the effect of the quarantine on this. Like the the late night shows obviously would have normally had you know normal monologues and oh here's what this person said on this show and it was funny but like there's hardly any guests now unless they're virtual same with like with the news espn there's no sports right now so they're still i checked and they, they're still making content every day for this news show called the replay by espn even though there's nothing to uh to replay you know so i guess they're just talking about different deals going on in sports and stuff so i thought that was kind of interesting but uh this one um yeah, was was not recorded before uh, before the quarantine. So up next, sexology with Shan Brudem. Uh, I really like this one. Now I, well, okay, I love talking about sex anyway. But I thought this first episode was helpful because it was how to create a uh, a good dating profile, and I am, you know, doing that right now, and especially in the quarantine, I'm like, this is a great time to actually get to talk to people without uh, the pressure of trying to hook up or whatever. So. Um, I actually th found this show very, very informative for my own personal uh, business. But, uh, but I like the host. I, I'm not familiar with her either, but I like her. Um, next is the Nod with Brittany and Eric. Didn't know them, but they uh, did a Black Culture podcast, and now uh, they're doing a show together. And again, this takes place post quarantine as well. They uh, say in that first episode, like, "Oh, all that stuff we we just showed you of us walking." around New York City, like, that was taken three days before all the quarantine stuff, so from now on, we're going to be at our homes and talking to each other virtually, and so it's it's very interesting that uh, it's uprooted a lot of things that, you know, I'm sure Quibi didn't think about any of that when they were launching, um, or when they had set the launch date, I should say. Um, but I, you know, they, they certainly have a, a friendship, but it was kind of fun. Um, they're going to tackle different topics of, of black history and black culture. Um, and the first episode was about how influential the Cheetah Girls really were. Um, and I thought that, you know, it was, it was a comical look at it, but, uh, but it was interesting. Um, next is All the Feels, and this is just cute animals and uh telling you their story uh this one was a story of a little puppy that was about to be euthanized and then they saved him and it was real cute and i don't know if you like that kind of thing it's it's perfect and then the, the very last one i got through these pretty quickly i'm glad i was trying to get them less than a minute each and i've done that um so number 32 the final one fresh daily by rotten tomatoes now this of course is right up my alley love movies and i always check tomato meters i love to know what critics think versus what the public thinks, um, and then see kind of where I fall in that range. And there's two different hosts here. Um, the the one is Australian though, and it bums me out because she says tomatoes, the tomato meter, and I'm like, oh, that's not what it's called. Um, but anyway, uh, the the black dude I've seen before. I don't know if I've watched videos on Rotten Tomatoes before, and he's been on them, or if I've seen him pop up elsewhere. But, um, but I've definitely seen him do like review stuff. So basically, um, they name three things you could watch uh, either on TV or for streaming, um, and then at the end of the show, they do like a deep dive into something new, which they did blow the man down. The uh, movie I reviewed a week ago on. Uh, Amazon Prime. So I thought that was really cool because I'm like, oh, cool. Like, I already know about this movie. Um, and then at the very end of the show, they give you a couple suggestions of um, shooting off of what they already talked about. So for this, they talked about Blow the Man Down, and uh, the gal suggested watching LA Confidential, and the dude suggested watching Who Framed Roger Rabbit because they're both sort of uh, noir, mystery, thrillers sort of thing. Um, although very different genres overall. Um, but so that's it. Those are all 32 shows. So my favorites, um, you know, sort of just going by category, my favorite for the, the movies is absolutely when the, street, when the Street Lights Go On. I thought that was really well done and very intriguing. That's one that I will probably finish. I guess I'll finish Most Dangerous Game too, but I'm not sure uh, how much I'll like it. Um, the absolute worst of that was Nikki Fresh. For sure, hands down. Docu series, um, boy, uh, Shape of Pasta was was actually probably the most interesting. Oh no, Run the City, Run the City, and Shape of Pasta I would say were the most interesting uh, that I liked the most. The worst is the uh, and music one, very boring. Um, for the reality and competition and talk shows, um, these were pretty much either love it or hate it. There weren't any in here that I thought were like okay, except I guess. Um, the murder house flip was like okay. The sauce was okay, but um, 
like Dishmantled, I thought was fun. The the mental the mentalism series was really cool. Memory Hole was actually okay. I, I kind of expected a little more out of that one. Um, it wasn't as funny as I wanted it to be. Uh, Singled Out was a lot of fun. I barely watched the original because when that was on, I did not have MTV. So if I was over at my friend's house, we would watch it sometimes. But um, but I liked that a lot. The worst by far was Skirt with Offset and Chrissy's Court. Oh my God! Like I will never watch them unless there's a freaking gun to my head. And you can get that gun from the Offset show about cars, somehow. Um, all right, so, and then Daily Essentials Lifestyle. Uh, this was a bit of a mixed bag, but a lot of surprises. Uh, there weren't any in here that I really hated. Um, all the feels was is sort of, like, cheap, I, f I feel. Like, all right, we get it. Like, you can see cute animals all over the Internet, though. So I just thought that was sort of, like, a cheap ploy to, like, oh, here, look at this cute animal. Um... I would say that the ones that were my favorite... I mean, the meditation one's cool for sure, but um, there's not a lot to it. I would say um, the Fresh Daily with Rotten Tomatoes is is very cool, especially for me. For And it's also probably the best produced one, I would say. Like, the sexology one is just them kind of sitting around a room and talking. Um, Rachel Hollis is well produced, but it's just her, so there's not much to it. You know, Rotten Tomatoes, they're doing like movie clips and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the, the late night one is well produced as well. Last night's late night. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I liked a lot of these. The sex one was cool. The Rachel, the, the nod with Brittany and Eric. Um, you know, the ones I think I'll watch on a semi regular basis are going to be the Rotten Tomatoes one, maybe Sexology. And I'll use the meditation one. Uh, maybe I'll check out the late night one. But other than that, I you know, the Rachel Hollis one was cool, but it's, I don't know, it's it's a stylish show I don't really watch. So I liked it, but it's nothing I'll watch all the time. All right, so likes and dislikes overall of Quibi. Now, the main thing with Quibi is you can only do it on your phone. We've already talked about this. One thing I really like is that they've basically shot things two ways or produced it two ways. You can hold your phone like this. Or you can hold it like this. Either whether it's in portrait or landscape, it will fill your whole screen, and they've filmed it to adjust that accordingly. And so, many, many, many times in watching a lot of the different shows, I would just go from one to the other just to see the contrast and okay, how much is being cut off. And then you know some some things it's a lot, but the way these are filmed, it's purposely like that. So the landscape does have a lot of stuff on either side that you don't maybe need, although it maybe makes the picture look better. So um, so I thought that was really an interesting uh, thing. Uh, there's also no filler in uh, especially the reality and the game shows because a lot of times, like my least favorite thing about watching The Masked Singer or um, when I used to watch American Idol all the time or when I watch America's Got Talent is like the, the, the waiting and the like... The, the stupid skits they do with the judges or, you know, we're going to play the same clip four times until you really remember how this person sounds. It's like there's there's none of that here. So we lose all the filler. Even even game shows are like, who wants to be a millionaire? It's like, you know, the lights go down and then, you know, we ask the question. Then you sit there for, you know, a little while and think about the answer. It's like there's none of that. Everything is very, very fast-paced. Um, and I actually think in some cases it's maybe a little too fast-paced. I think some of the episodes that are seven or eight minutes could be ten or twelve, um, but of course they don't go past ten, so no no dice. But you know, um, but I thought that was a cool one. Um, it's also fairly clean. Um, they say the s word a bunch. I don't curse on this channel hardly at all. Like I'll say ass. That's about the the worst I'll get. But um, there were no f words unless it was specifically marked mature. There were a couple of the, the dramas that were like that. Um, and maybe one or two of the lifestyle shows. I don't know, but for the most part, um, you know, the S word is is the worst that you hear. So I I like that it's fairly clean, especially because I think you know, and I talk about this on my weekly TV show all the time. But um, I think Netflix and Amazon and people like that, they just like throw in excessive amounts of language because they can. And that's fine, but if it doesn't, you know, fit the story. So here, you know, and then people do curse, like on the Offset show, people will curse, but they'll they'll bleep out if they say the F word um, or something like that. So I, I like that. Um, also, it has the capability to be downloaded, these shows. So if you want to watch it on the train, let's say, 
and you can only watch it from Wi-Fi. Um, you know, you have the ability to, when you're on Wi-Fi, download whatever shows you want, and then they will pop up. And, you know, Netflix does that, and a lot of the other ones do that. But I think it's good because this is specifically designed for mostly commutes, really, or maybe workouts. You know, the one commercial has Chrissy Teigen on a uh, treadmill or a Peloton or something, um, you know, and she's like, oh, yeah, I'll go for a quibby. So, you know, that's a good use for it, too. I, I always like to watch things when I'm working out at the Y, for sure. Um, so those are all my likes. The dislikes is that it's only available on the phone uh, or the iPod. I, I really, you know, especially in the days of the quarantine when everybody's looking for stuff to watch on TV, I think it's unfortunate that they decided to stick with the phone-only premise. I really think that they could have made an app for your computer or for the Roku or Apple TV or whatever, the Amazon Fire Stick. I, I think that is a real bummer, to be honest. Especially because, you know, the other reason I chose to watch it on this is because I was going to be watching three to four hours basically in a row. And, you know, I get text messages on my phone. Uh, you know, I get Facebook messages on my phone. And the fact uh, that I would have to then wait until that was over, you know, the episode was over for me to even look at my text. Or I could just pause the show, but then I would have to go back. And it's like... So that's why I was like, well, I'll just watch everything on the iPod. It'll be smaller and more annoying, but I'll be able to still text people if I need to. Um, so I, that's definitely a disadvantage. Um, I had a lot of freezing up as well, um, especially after the ads. Um, you can do $8 a month for no ads or $5 a month for ads. Um, the ads are literally only 15 seconds. There's only one ad before each show, and not all of them, I think, even had ads maybe because I was watching so many of them in a row, but um, I did like that there was a variety of ads. There were probably, of the 32 shows, there were probably 8 to 10 different ads, so it's not like I was seeing the same 3 ads every freaking time I watched a show. But um, I, I, I don't know, you know why, but it tended to freeze the most at the end of the ad before the show started. So then you would have to basically log out of the app, or not log out, but, you know, close it, reopen it, and then it wouldn't open at that exact same spot. You'd have to search for the show again. So that was annoying. That was a big disadvantage. Um, the the movies and chapters don't really work either. Um, I mean, you know, things like reality shows or documentaries or whatever, that works in little bites. Chapters of a movie, I mean, even movie serials back in the day, back in the 30s and 40s, they mostly ran about 15 to 16 minutes. Um, you know, so you were really getting two quibbies in every short um, in, in the, the old days of serials. So, you know, even even by that standard, like, I just, I don't know. I mean, some of these movies are interesting and good, and, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm really looking forward to when the streetlights go on, but it's one of these things where it's like, I'll probably wait till there's more episodes up and just watch, like, all of it now, or, you know, all like, all of it at once, I don't know, seven or eight minutes of a movie, to me, is not that appealing. So, those are the, the likes and the dislikes. Um, so, is Quibi worth it? Is it worth five bucks a month, or, or eight bucks a month, depending if you want ads or not? I would say, overall, it is, because here's the thing. There is something for everybody here. Um, you know, and there's a lot of big names behind these shows and more to come. You know, they're doing a Reno 911 reboot. Um, there's a show with, is it the Jonas Brothers? I forget, but uh, I think Bruce Willis is, is signed off for one. Idris Elba, I know, is doing one. So, you know, there's a lot of big names attached to these shows. And even if you only end up watching, let's say, five to eight of them. I mean, like, like realistically, I'll probably continue to watch two of the movies um, maybe, I mean, I, maybe Run the City I'll watch from the, from the docuseries portion. Some of the reality shows, maybe, you know, I wouldn't mind probably watching Singled Out some more. I love the Dishmantle show, I'll watch more of that. The Mentalism show, um, and then some of the lifestyle shows. So, I mean, I might watch seven or eight of these on a regular basis. Plus, you know, they're, they're always, you know, going to be coming up with new things, too. So, to me, five bucks a month, that yeah, seems worth it. Plus... If you sign up before April 30th, you get 90 days for free. So a lot of these shows will be wrapped up by then. You know, the Thanks a Million, that's only going to be 10 episodes. So they'll replace these with other shows um, that maybe you'll like more. I mean, the content overall definitely needs to get better. 
Um, and just some of the shows are just not suited for a small screen. The, the, the Reese Witherspoon nature show looks cool, and it's very nice to see the, the leopards and stuff, but, like, I would rather see... And my TV's not even that big, but I would rather see it on a big TV um, so I can really get immersed in, in the nature. Um, you know, so not all of the shows, I think, fit the format. I think they need to tweak what works for this short form and telephone only, um, format, you know, uh, as opposed to some other things. Now, I guess you could watch it probably on an iPad. I don't have an iPad, but that's, I guess, the biggest screen you could watch it on. Now, that might, you could watch a nature show on a, on an iPad, I guess, because you're so up close to it. Um, I didn't think of that until right now because I don't have one, but I guess on a tablet you could watch it too. Uh, maybe not though. I don't know. I don't know. I, I would think you can because it's anywhere, I guess, with an apps with an Apple Store, but I can't do it on my on my computer. Well, I should have looked into that, but uh, but it's specifically designed for the phone, so I don't know. I don't know if tablets work or not. That would be something to research. But um, overall, yes, I suppose Quibi is worth it. You'll certainly find something here to enjoy, I think, because they've really sort of thrown everything at the wall um, and, and hope that some of the, some things will stick. Um, now, in terms of, like, how many episodes these things have, other than the Thanks a Million show, I don't know. Um, obviously, the daily news shows and stuff will be ongoing, but, you know, these movies, I don't know. Will it make a full two hours once we're done with episodes? Not sure. Um, but I would say Quibi is worth it. Um, certainly get the 90-day free trial and see if you like it. Um, but that will do it for uh, today. I'm going to be back with some movie reviews tomorrow. I'm going to have Call of the Wild and Trolls World Tour among them. And then uh, I don't know what's going to be next. We'll, <laughs> we'll have to figure it out. I don't have any other uh, previously recorded things in the can for you, so uh, every day I'll have to come up with something. But um, but yeah, comment below. Let me know uh, if you have Quibi, what shows you like. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Be safe. Bye.